Greeting to all the students. Welcome to Global Online. And here we are back with our NTA UGC Net Paper 2 preparation for 2022 batch. And we have already, as you know, that we have started Unit 3, that is uh, Strategic Human Resource Management. And this is the Lecture 2. We have uh, completed the first lecture with the role, strategic role of human resource management. Now, today we are going to see in the second lecture a topic called as Competency Mapping and Balance Scorecard. So before we go ahead, a quick update to you all. We Global Online has came up with um, a new updated app wherein you can, uh, the uh, in, on the screen, you can see the updated app uh, icon is given. You can uh, download with the help of Google Play Store. Uh, you can see for UGC Net, that is um, Management Paper 2, we have a series of complete video lectures. We have notes, we have test series, we have previous year question papers in the PDF form, that is five year question papers. We also have target based preparation, which will help you to crack your attempt for management. So contact details are given uh, on the screen. The fees for the same is rupees 7,000. But here you have an exclusive offer with paper two, you will get definitely paper one free. So in case of any queries or doubts, you can get in touch with the given WhatsApp number and clarify. So let's start the session for the day. So as you all know that we are going to do um, unit three and uh, unit, unit three, basically we are going to talk about what you're going to talk about, competency mapping and balance scorecard. So now when we uh, go ahead, like basically what is, uh, you know, what exactly you mean by the word competency? So competency basically is nothing but, you know, it is something which is called as what? Uh, skill in, in easiest language in easiest language or easy to understand or remember it is a skill which helps the organization uh, the skill or the quality of an uh, org of an employee in the organization which helps to go for a job evaluation which helps to go for training recruitment and development so this is what basically is about what is about um, your competency as the individual word but when we go to the topic that is when when we go something called as you know when we go something called as competency mapping so uh, exactly what is competency mapping so let's now understand what do you mean by the word competency mapping so competency mapping is nothing but a process which helps to identify the competencies and uh, for a uh, for an organization or for a particular job so that uh, there can be, you know, job evaluation, uh, training and recruitment taking place. So it generally examines the two areas. It examines the emotional intelligence as well as, it, uh, or you can say the emotional question and the strength of an individual in the areas like the stream structure, the leadership and the decision making. So that is how, you know, we talk about what we talk about competency mapping. Now, when we go ahead, obviously, we need to understand or we need to know what is the importance of competency mapping. Now, we know that competency mapping helps the organization in various ways. So, how it is important. So, the first thing is that the first need and importance is cost of manpower is increasingly becoming high. So, obviously, you know, it is, it's, it's not easy to get the best employee or to retain the employees. So, it's very, very important that you need to understand what are their core areas, what are their competencies and you, you can take the advantage in, in multitasking form. So, you, uh, you can make use of one employee for various work. It is a realization of truth that people can transform an organization. It means the employees can bring a change in the organization, getting more from the people rather than getting more people. So that's how it is linked with the first point. So it's basically you keep your uh, manpower minimum and get maximum things extracted from them instead of having more amount of people in your organization. People here refers to the employees. Now, increase customer focus, identifying and fulfilling the customer needs and expectations. So, yes, this will also help, you know, if you are identifying a right skill, you can place a person for a right job and that will help you to give, you know, clear indication of your customer focus. It also helps to understand or recognize the fact, you know, what kind of human resources can uh, monitor or manage technology wise, finance wise, market wise, customers wise, or you can also say, you know, like relationship wise, process wise, procedure wise and system. So this uh, definitely will help you to give your organization a best uh, analysis in order to come up with, you know, or, or in order to go 
uh, for a greater business scale. Okay. Now, so when we like, for example, when we summarize this, when we summarize the importance or the need of competency mapping, it talks about increasing the awareness of in existing skills. So whatever skills you have, ensure that are efficiently worked out. Employees are going to, you know, going in the right direction. So competency mapping will help us to find out the roadmap, whether it is, you know, the, the path which you have drawn for your employees in order to achieve the organization goal. So whether that is going in a correct form or not increase the productivity so you know this is this, if you're if the skills are correctly identified if they are used in a correct form this is going to help you know this is going to increase the sales this is help, going to increase the productivity build trust between the employees yes this will uh, have a very uh, good bonding between the employees a trust factor will be there where the things will be very easier to work out helps the employee to reach the organizational objectives. So competency mapping, you know, if it is done in a best proper way or if it is done in an effective way, it will help the organization to achieve the objectives with the help of employee. And integrate management practices. So when we say integrate management practices, it means that everything which is, you know, uh, thought about or everything which is planned for is working in the best possible manner, the way it should so that is one of the reason that, you know, competency mapping plays an important role in the organization. Now, so let's understand that how to do this. So what exactly are the steps or what exactly is the stages in competency mapping? So you can say that it is also called as process or you can say it is also called as a stages. So let's understand what is the process or stages. So the first thing is to identify the departments for competency profiling. So whose profiling you should do, which department, which individual employee, which particular particular uh, segment so that first thing you should understand where exactly the competency needs to be done then identify the hierarchy within the organization and selection of levels so like for example how to uh, go how to who for whom to exactly find this competency so for that it is very important that you understand the hierarchy level and uh, you identify the factors and based on that the selection level is done obtain the job description um, preparation of semi-structured interview uh, so that you know th certain things can come out or certain brainstorming can be done and uh, with the help of that things can be uh, uh, properly mapped recording the interview details preparation of the list of skills indicating the proficiency level that is what exactly the proficiency is seen to validate the competencies and uh, you know uh, with the help of the superiors as well as with the concerned departments, preparation of competency uh, dictionary so that, you know, what skills are there should be listed out and mapping of the competency. So finally, once you are done with all those things with the re respect to department, with the respect to employees, with the respect to heads, it, and when you have understood the proficiency level, then it is important that you uh, map your competency, how you need to, you know, work out on that competency should be very, very clear. Now, Next one we have is, uh, yes. So what are the methods of this competency mapping? So we can see one by one the various methods. So when you talk about this competency mapping, now we have understood, okay, you need to map the competency with the things, so, you know, with the following factors. So the methods can be in the form of assessment center, critical incident techniques, interview techniques, uh, the questionnaire and the psychometric test. So one by one, we will just have a look of every one, you know, all the methods. So first is the assessment center. Now, what exactly is assessment center? It is a, a methodology, but definitely, which involves, you know, the observation. It is something which helps to identify, you know, the skills, the potential for the growth. It uses a few methods. It, uh, it, you know, it gets combined with a few methods to evaluate employees for human resource and manpower purpose and decision. Like you can say in that candidates are asked to work through certain scenario uh, while they are that uh, so that a trained assessor can observe their behavior and can map their competency. So there, so this all is done in the form of what in a center that is, you know, it, it, it is done in a, a specific place, you can say, or it is done in a specific way so that you can get a clear idea about the competencies which you need to identify. Now, critical incident techniques, critical incident techniques, it means you can say 
uh, the techniques which are basically uh, looking at the success and the failure of you know the the performing uh, the way the individual performs the job so it is a process of i systematic identifying the behavior contribution which can lead to a success or failure of a specific competency in a specific situation so you can you you can say that uh, like the incidents you have been planned so that it will help you to understand what exactly the behavior is revealed in that particular pattern so this critical incidents will help to or will and help you to give the the exact picture of you know the behavior of an employee then interview techniques so interview techniques is basically every organization has different techniques there is no standard process it can be a personal interview it can be a panel interview it can be a group interview so in that how you know competencies are been found out and how are they mapped so this this will play an important role then we have something called as you know questionnaire so now a questionnaire technique where you know it is followed by the list of questions that the users would fill in written uh, maybe it is it can be taken one on one basis it can be given in the form of you know a uh, questionnaire part so this is basically done to understand uh, what exactly is the reach of competency of that particular employee maybe the group maybe the individual employee or maybe the a department now psychometric test so this focuses on you know the selection process so where the natural uh, variness about you know uh, unknown things which you can't make out with a normal interview process so that that can be helped to identify identified with the help of psychometric test so it is you know a measuring approach of your behavioral attitude so it can be basically with reference to aptitude test and achievement test what exactly you know what are the natural in inclinations that can be helped with the help of that it can be found out with the help of aptitude test and achievement test which will help you to find out you know the proficiency level so these these things will help out to understand you know what exactly is the uh, what exactly the uh, you can say the competencies can be mapped so in this competency mapping topic we'll just summarize what what we did so first we understood what is competency competency mapping is nothing but you know a uh, uh, identification of a skills uh, in order to come up with a training recruitment development and that that which the process is done is known as you know it's it's called as mapping then we understood the need and the importance in order to map a competency then we went ahead with uh, understanding the steps so if you want to map a competency what exactly you need to do what exactly you need to follow what structure you need to uh, take care of then once you are done with the steps okay so you know the process you know the importance you know the meaning so there has to be certain methods so what are the various methods in which competency can be mapped so competency can be mapped with the help of the following methods which we have learned just now so now the the next topic and the last topic for the the this particular session is your balance scorecard okay now what exactly is balance scorecard so balance scorecard it's you know there are some a uh, few questions which are seen with reference to balance scorecard but first let's understand what exactly it is so it is nothing but a tool which is used to evaluate the effectiveness of human resource management how much effective are the people of your organization what level of effectiveness do they carry with them so that if you want to find out it is done with the help of uh, balance scorecard a balance scorecard is a performance metric it means a tool which is used to identify improve you know and control various functions uh, uh, based on the resulting outcomes so what are the outcomes based on that various functions are you know uh, listed with the help of balance scorecard the concept of balance scorecard now this can be a part of your uh, question that it was introduced in 1992 by david norton and robert Cal kaplan which who know who took previous metric performance and adapted them to include in the non financial information so this was first implemented by the uh, by the, by them in the year 1992 and they are the one who who has developed this concept now so balance scorecard uh, basically allows what exactly it does so it allows the companies to 
pull the information in a single report so to provide the information into the service quality so that you know to uh, in addition to the financial improve uh, performance and improve the efficiency so in one documentation or in one part you will be able to see you know what exactly is going on in your organization or how the organization is uh, proceeding now uh, yes now balance scorecard is also it is also involves you know measuring the uh, i mean to say uh, four aspects of business now what are those four aspects of four dimension so it is first of all the learning and growth it is a business process the customers and the finance so when i say uh, like for example uh, learning and growth it means what type of improvement business process how the system or the uh, steps are taken what how the care of the customer is you know done and what type of financial uh, aspects are taken into consideration so like for example let us let us do it little bit in detail so when i talk about learning and growth so it is about new technology or new invention or innovation which is introduced in the organization uh so that you know for that the efficiency training should be given uh the uh, utilization should be done for the sake of growth that is improvement when i say business process it means that you know it talks about evaluation uh the management evaluating the efficiency in the production process system as i said okay so it's nothing but a process so what exactly is happening uh you know what what Uh, how the process is taking place how the deliveries are done or what cost you know is incurred per day when when we talk about the system when we talk about the customers it is basically uh, to find out what exactly the customer is having a perception towards the organization how can be they uh, how can we retain the customers how can the customers be satisfied when we talk about finance it is basically uh, you know the uh, short term and the long term financial performance how the things are going on whether it is a financial crisis what exactly is the state of the financial year so all this gets covered into what in the main aspects of business you may have you know the four aspects where you have to understand the aspects and go ahead so in the this is what we have done so in today's class we have done competency mapping as well as balance scorecard which is unit 3 second sub topic now the next lecture we will be seeing career planning and development it's an uh, individual topic which will go for that in case as i said earlier also if you have any queries any anything regarding paper 1 paper 2 the number is reflecting in front of you you can get in touch with the given number and try to find out any any queries or in you can just get enrolled and start preparing because very less time is left for your cycle that is june is the tentative dates which are given but on an average you have just two and a half months so where you need to really buck up well and uh, start preparing for your examination thank you everyone